that you have to make sure it's not done behind, that's the way you undo it. It's slow. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae2reggae.com. You see, the little that they gave you was just to deceive you. Don't tell me that you were blind. Psychological health. Last week we did physical health, and yesterday we did psychological health, bearing in mind our four rules of celebrate life. And what are these? These are one, know where you're going, two, know your tribal, three, pay as you enter, and four, enjoy the ride. And as usual, I have to give all my little uh, reminders and mascots. And over here, my number one. This is an angel. 
and this angel is holding a book. And this book is telling Jamaica what we need to know. Who is the angel? Well, an angel is a messenger of Satan. Oh, we did it again. There are messengers of Satan, but this angel is a messenger from God, right? And how do you know who the messenger comes from? What the message is. Because the message has to be the same thing that's in the book. And so this angel is telling us what the book is saying about Jamaica and what the book is saying about Jamaicans and what the book is saying about every single individual one of us. And so this is my favorite. This is who I identify with. And so every day I come to you with my book, which I sit down and I write off things from, sometimes I use my iPad, you know, I put that over here. But sometimes I write off things from this book into this book. And so here am I, do I look like her? Or him? Or the angel? Because they don't have any sex, you know. Uh -uh. But guess what? They bring information from the creator as to how we should operate, what we should do, how we should move, how we should move, what we should say, every single thing you need for life is in this book. And so this is what we are bringing to you here on Reggae to Reggae, the best of what is intended for Jamaica to move forward into her purpose and her destiny. And so the only way we can do that is to move the individual Jamaicans forward into our destiny and into our purpose for being created. And that's the purpose of Celebrate Life to show you how you can celebrate every moment of the day as you move towards the purpose that you were created for. Because remember, every single one of us was created as a solution to a problem. Yesterday, I went to the most magnificent seminar. It was called The Art and Science of Happiness, and it was put on by CLI, that is Choose Life International. And they went through all the different things that we need to do to be happy. They all came out of this book. But guess what? They were corroborated by research from all the different people all over the world. Psychiatrists and psychologists and scientists and researchers and doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs and all sort of ordinary people and people who had used those principles and were successful. We saw three videos. One of this young man who had no hands and no feet. It was so exciting. The other one was of this other man who was paralyzed from here down. Those of us who are older remember Jodie Erickson, Tada, and she was the same thing. She was a female who was paralyzed from here down in a swimming accident, I think, and he was in a surfing accident. And how he was able to overcome all these situations and become a motivational speaker. All of them are motivational speakers. And guess what? You know, that is what we are all called to be, motivational speakers. Some of us motivate the world. Some of us motivate our country. Some motivate our family. And some motivate ourselves. But guess what? That is what we are all called to be, motivational speakers. And there was another one. And that one, oh, had no hands, but he had feet. It was a she. That's right. And guess what? She had a fear. She could, could do everything. At anybody. You must see her tied with her toes, right? You must see her paint, do everything with her toes. Well, she had a fear of flying, and so she decided that she's going to get a pilot's license. And you want to see her pulling up the throttle and turning the thing, you know, steering the plane up in the sky. And she got 
her pilot's license because she was so competent. No hands, only feet. And that is why I want, you know why I want to share this with you? Because we need to understand that we have been so blessed. If those people can get to those heights and achieve those things without what we call all the normal appendages, well, guess what? What is our excuse? So, today we are going to look at, in the psychological realm, knowing your driver. Remember, number one, know where you're going, which we did yesterday. Number two, knowing your driver. Number three, pay as you enter, which is tomorrow. And number four, enjoy the ride, which is on Friday. So tomorrow and Thursday, you are going to hear about your input into what you need to do to make sure that you put your contribution in so that you can reap the rewards. And the last thing I want to say in this first section is this. We need to understand that when we were created by the author of this book, and that's not Moses, it is our creator. We were created without any mistake. If you were born with a congenital issue, an issue that you were born with something so-called wrong, it's not a mistake. I tell you about that I was born with four ankles because I was destined to be a dancer. Huh. So guess what? Look at your drawback and know that it is a stepping stone to your future, to your destiny. And so we need to just embrace wherever we are at and understand that the Creator makes no mistakes. And the sooner we recognize that, accept it, and act on it, the sooner we'll be sailing towards our intended end. And what is that? The Creator had a plan. He had a plan in mind to make you and to make me the solution to so many issues that he put into each of his creation. And remember, he's not a his, but you know, for purposes of, you know, calling him, I'll just call him a his, but I couldn't call him a hers too, because guess what? He's like a hen that has her chickens under her wing for protection. So let's just move on and call the creator. I don't want anybody to come and say that I'm not a human or her and I'm not to say no mother, father, God. That's not the issue. The issue is our creator is a father, a mother, and in all his aspects, a brother, a son, a husband, anything we need. He can be like that to us. I'm getting downloads and stuff in my mind. So when you see my face goes like that, it means that, should I say this on ear or not? Not for that one. Um, but back to our creator, he never makes a mistake. Consequently, if you have what you consider to be a flaw or a fault, part of your purpose in life and your destiny is the embracing of that flaw and the overcoming of what could be seen as negatives or the drawbacks of that particular flaw. So if you're too fat, there's a reason. If you're sick, there's a reason. So that when you have overcome, and this is the reason, when you have overcome that flaw, then it builds on this character, all this strength. And guess what? Gives you the ability to now be a part of the solution for everybody else who will come up with that flow. And that is the purpose of sickness. Another reason for sickness is this. That the only time some people stop is when they get licked down and not lie down in the bed. Right? So you find that most people come into their real and true destiny as a result of tragedy of one sort or the other. 
And so you need to learn to embrace tragedy, embrace those things with a joyful spirit. I do it with anticipation because every time anything pop down, really pop down, then it's time for me to get excited because something is coming up. Everything popped down. Something is coming up. God went is down now. The place is moving up. So you need to bear that in mind. When it comes to directions, you need to know that every time there is a downward draft, there will be an upward surge. And guess what? Draft moves through, but surge moves fast. And so we need to embrace those downward drafts because it's preparing us to go down. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, but trying to run down the hill now to give you like on a push cart derby to go down the hill so that when you go down really fast, you can just come up. When we there, one day when I used to have a little thing, I was coming down Ligany Avenue, going towards Ligany again. And you know that last place, dip and come back up before you get to survey? Yes, we there. I decided to do the upward surge. And I go down the little thing. This is a long time away. Down. And when I come up, I just press the gas up. You know, Mid here, when I reach the top of the hill, I was off e airborne. Boom! Airborne and drop back on. Thank you, Jesus. That's a cover my stupidity because I dropped back on the four wheels. Don't try that, you know. Don't try it. Because why God have your back? After a while, when He gives you more and more wisdom, you have a responsibility to do your part and don't push it so don't push it but remember that that downward surge gives you the ability to come up and get airborne and then the next draft carries you and you just soar on wings as eagles and remember part of our process here as grubs and caterpillars and worms is that one day the caterpillar is going to become a butterfly and then he will be set free to soar. And that's the name of one of my programs that I have been doing for years in the inner city where we take persons who are going to be a part of a certain program to get houses from certain uh, government agencies and we train them how to take off when they get those houses where those houses will not now deteriorate <coughs> pardon me, into slums but they will rival the uptown gated communities and so when you go in to look at those developments now that are in probably about eight different inner cities. It was because they got that training of how to move from a caterpillar to a butterfly, set free to soar. And you know what I use as my text? I use Alvin Day's book, If Caterpillars Can Fly, So Can I. And so I just expanded it and added my husband's book, Earl's Seven Steps to Heal and Help. And then when both of them were together, I just did this course. It was fabulous. And it's a course that is available to anybody who'd like to write to me for it. It is a three month program and it can reorient your whole mindset so that you can get ready to take off from your disadvantage from the caterpillar place into the butterfly stage and you will be ready to soar and take off. So when we come back, we look at some more of the steps that we have to take as we look at know your driver because that is what we are covering today regarding psychological health. Take a break. See you back in a second or two. Are you struggling with some kind of health?
health condition? Is it arthritis, high blood pressure, Crohn's disease, constipation, AIDS, cancer? Whatever it is, we can show you how to get your natural defenses up so that your bodies will deal with your condition. Join us as our studio audience on reggae to reggaecom when we will teach you how to celebrate every moment of your life. Call us at 336-7350 for information, limited space. On reggae to reggaecom we encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. So a bird flew down this morning As if he's saying something to me Sitting on the limb of a tree Giving me a sound of sweet melody mm. I was just breathing like green green Every day on the show I have a green drink Because I have a green drink at 8 No, 6, 10 Two, six, ten. But when I'm coming on the show, I need an extra kick. And so I have my green gym right before the show or during the show because that gives me all the energy. Remember, when you were doing physical health, we spoke about the greens. And everybody, in order to be very, very healthy, you need to keep your blood in good condition. The life of the human being is in the blood. And for that to be built, you need to have five chlorophyll servings a day. And that way, you'll be good to go. Always have energy. Why is this so important? Every day I give you a different fact. Well, one, it builds, the chlorophyll has the same molecular structure as hemoglobin in your blood. So it is like a blood transfusion when you do that. And so it's important to understand what you get from green. The second thing is, it is the major contributory factor to building your stem cells. Bet you didn't know all have stem cells. Every single one of us has stem cells. Now, what's the function of a stem cell? Stem cells are cells in their primary form that can swim around your whole bloodstream. And guess what? Find wherever there's a defective, deficient, or absent cell and replace it. And guess what? These are manufactured in our bone marrow. I mean, main building material is chlorophyll or green stuff. More on that tomorrow when I'm having my green drink. But bear that in mind. Now, you know that whenever I have my number two, no, this is my number three mascot on the show. This is number one. This is number two, my lion of the tribe of Judah, right? And this is number three. But she's not always on the show. Her name is Raggedy, and she is my coordinate, meaning that whatever I make for myself, she's always in a coordinate. So today, you know, we have what we call an asymmetrical hairstyle. So you, you sort of bring this side forward like this, and she, come on. The ring is over here, but anyway, so yeah, right. And so, because I am in transition with my hair, I cut 10 inches off yesterday, and um, I am now doing styles that you know we both have about the same hair length relative that can work at any length. Wait until it comes down to nothing. I will also have wonderful styles for you to do. So, here we have her, and she has on. Um, well, her dress is sort of long, right? But the reason is that this is 
a piece that I made for a girlfriend of mine, my dear. I said, why don't you come and spend the night with me? And she came over and forgot her nighty. So guess what I said? Let me just knock up a nighty for you. So I got a light piece of cotton and just knocked it up. And then when I put it out, I, you know, it's a sort of a flare, low swing flare, what have you. And I, when I put it on, because I tried everything on me, it doesn't matter whether the fact that she is X size is bigger. I tried it on and I said, oh, it's so wonderful style. Let me make one for myself. So here is mine. And I coordinated mine with pants. And this is one of my standard dancers' costumes. You can have it with or without sleeves. But it's easy to move in, it's cool, it's comfortable, and it's well covered. So here is hers, a little long. And but because it's not really hers, but I wanted her to show that you know there's versatility here. Hers has a um empire line. Right, it has a band right under the bust line. Now, if you'd like to accentuate the bust line, then an empire line is good. It makes uh, you look a little more endowed. And so, remember, these pieces can be ordered online from CelebrateLife.me. So, give us your measurements, and we have a form. You can fill it out. You can choose your fabric, and you can have these all made for yourself and your dance groups, or just for yourself. You want to have a cool time on the road. So, thank you, Raggedy. And now we're going to go into the meat of our thing. And she's going to go have a seat on the lion and the tribe of Judah. Now, keep your hand on his head because that's where all information comes from. Right. Now, into the meat of our program now. Remember, today we're doing psychological health. And since I'm not matching her, let me get that back over there. And we are doing knowing your driver. That means you've got to know what the driver has to say and what who he is. Because guess what? If you want to come back into psychological health, that means mental health and so on. It means that you have to follow what he says in the book, his rules. So you have to know who he is. Because guess what? He is the one who has the ability to do everything that you need to have done. Yesterday, we mentioned what psychological health has to do with. Two things, your emotions, which you have with yourself, and your relationships, which you have with everybody else. So when you think that your emotions are with other people, forget it, it has nothing to do with anybody else but yourself. So if you're angry, you're really angry with yourself. If your vex is you, your vex with. If you have no self-esteem, then guess what? It's because you have made that choice. Everything we do has to do with the choices we make. And we also told you on yesterday's program, and I'm so glad I did this before I went to the happiness seminar um we told on yesterday pro yesterday's program that, that what you think can pop into your head anyway but you can change what you think by what you speak so there's a cycle and i don't know which is a chicken and which is the egg but here how it goes you think something it makes you feel a certain way and because you feel a certain way you say a certain thing and because you say a certain thing you have activated creative forces because that's a part of how you're made in the creator's image because the creator spoke and everything came into being. And similarly, we can speak and everything we speak shall come into being, whether it's good or bad. And we spoke about the fact that whatever we speak plants a seed. So if your child is doing badly in school and you say to them, you're going to make dance just like your big brother or your uncle or your father, you have planted a seed and every day you water it by saying things like, boy, I don't know how you can 
have so much looking. I don't know how you can get so much now. I don't know. Da, 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 da. I, you know, water it by saying those things. And then that growth. But guess what? You know, you can starve it. You can starve it. Starve it. And you stop saying those bad things about your child. At any point, you start to starve it. And then you start to speak the opposite thing. And you overpower the first words with the second set of words. You it just shrivel up and die and a new seed is planted that is going to come up and be lush and lovely and it's going to be a wonderful fruit. Not bitter fruit, sweet fruit. So remember, what you say is going to influence not what only what you do, but what the other person is going to grow up and do. But guess what? You are on the receiving end. You can change it yourself. You can say, I will not take the seed. I will not put it into my the good soil of my heart or my spirit. I will not accept it. I'm going to stand up on top of it. Right? We are power over the power of the enemy. Put him under our feet. Stand up on top of it. Stamp him out. After all, kill him dead. So we can decide that we are going to grind him down into the dust. And how do we do that? By using these words. So every time somebody speaks a bad or negative word over you, you are going to overpower it by speaking the truth. Guess what? What they're speaking may be the facts. We spoke about the facts and the truth yesterday. The facts are what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you feel, and what you actually experience. Because it's right there in front of you. You see, we can't look on this and say it, it does not exist. But guess what? You can get the facts can change. The truth can change. Facts can change. Because it's right here and not beautiful right here. And then yeah, I come here and decide a tiny thread here. I just cut it off or I just dye it. Like what I'm doing tonight. Right now I made a bad choice and dyed mine. After all, God never make me with no blood here. So what am I doing with blood here? So I decided that I'm cutting it off progressively to get rid of the dye. And then I am going to allow my real to come out. Now this is a real here, but it's not a real color. And God don't make no mistake, you know. You know, some of us gray early, some of us gray later. Those who gray early, God knows you will look fabulous with gray hair. Those who gray late, God knows they would look fabulous with gray hair. So I make you keep the black hair. You understand? He always does what's best for you. And that is a concept that all of us need to embrace. What does embrace mean? Hug it up. Don't let it go. Embrace it. Because once we embrace it and accept it, then we will be happy with it. And that's what we want to do every day of our lives. Because that's the only way you are going to enjoy the ride. And so remember, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But he has come. To give us life and life more abundantly. That means that you have abundant health, abundant weight, abundant peace, love, and joy so that you can expand the kingdom of God. Where did I get that from? I got it from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, and it says this It is the Lord, your Creator, God. Who gives you, gives you help so that you can acquire a whole lot of wealth. And when you acquire all of that wealth, you use it to expand his kingdom. And that's what we are all made for, every single one of us. Da -da -da. Time for a break. Tell you more about this when you come back.
Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, no one ever thought of putting the two hours of music together until we created reggae to reggaecom struggling with some kind of health condition? Is it arthritis, high blood pressure, Crohn's disease, constipation, AIDS, cancer? Whatever it is, we can show you how to get your natural defenses up so that your bodies will deal with your condition. Join us at our studio audience on reggae to reggaecom when we will teach you how to celebrate every moment of your life. Call us at 336-7350 for information, limited space. I guess he's trying to tell me something, something that I should know. Now we are going to look at some more about knowing your tribe. First of all, you've got to know the purpose for which you are creating. Remember, you know, that I gave you some indications as to how we can find what the purpose is. One is your major disadvantage. Two is your dreams and your visions. And the more, what should I say, unattainable they are better because then you know that definitely you cannot do this by yourself. You need the help of the Almighty to do this. And so your Creator knows because He puts those visions in you. He puts those daydreams in you. It was not just from your own mind and your own big imagination. Because guess what? He says that He wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask for a thing. And let me tell you something. Me, I have an imagination bar none. I don't know anybody in this world who has an imagination like me. And guess what? I'm not afraid to ask. I am not afraid to ask for what I imagine. And guess what? I get it every time. And whatever I haven't gotten so far, it's because the Lord wants to make it bigger and better and get all the different persons and players in, in place to support and be a resource for the next step. So guess what? You take the old days where I go, uh -uh. what does my creator say? Your latter end will be greater than you, whatever went before, before now. And so guess what? Every day gets better and better. Every day I step up and run. It doesn't matter what happens, whether it is life or death or sickness or mm, problems, economic situation. <laughs> that door feels good one bit because guess what? Who is my provider? And whether I have in the bank or in my little purse or in my debit card account is neither here, not here. When I know who my creator is, he is the one who says, I will supply all your needs. And remember, there are some people out there, some screaming people who baptize in lime juice, who talk about, yes, he is going to supply my needs for food, shelter, and clothing. I said, does that sound like abundant life? Excuse me, no. The reason I came and gave over my whole life to my creator when I was age seven 
was because I like plenty things. I'm a preacher, they preach about abundant life. And I never understand the whole thing, but I just understand the word abundant. And because I like plenty pretty dress and plenty shoes and plenty toys and plenty, plenty. I decide maybe I should have this thing. And guess what? All my life. I've been a collector. About five years ago, when I checked my art collection, I had four hundred pieces. I started collecting when I was 15 in my mother's house and I would just push them under the bed. And then after that, I decided to do my own artwork. I had no training whatsoever. So me and a friend got together and we decided that we were going to make all these, um, what do you call it, modern art pieces. So we got into this factory and got along the spray room and then we got the spray table, you know, the spray table that turns around and they put furniture on it. I just spray them you know, so you can just rotate it. When we did, we put a drill under the spray table. And on top of the table, we put some pieces of paper. And then we got all kind of different color paints. And we just put them out in some little cups, like some little tins, containers. And then Put the drill on low speed, and one of us put on a piece of plastic and go under the table, and then start the drill man, and then the other one just throw the paint on it, and as as the table spin, it just flash this here and flash that here and flash that here. Sometimes it just did a little slow thing. Sometimes we throw it on. We ended up with something close to a hundred different pieces of. Artwork and guess what? Some look like a cock fight, some just they just came out like all sorts of things, just like how sometimes you look at the clothes and you see all sorts of different shapes. That's how it came out. And guess what? We decided we're going to open a company and sell all this artwork. And we sure did. I remember way back, I don't know when it was, maybe the 70s or the 80s, we went down to the tourist school on Harbor Street and we said. Can we exhibit our pieces on your fence? And they said yes. And every day we went out and put all the art pieces hanging from the tourist board fence right along down is it Duke Street, whatever street. And we sold most of the pieces and eventually took some for posterity. I have got to see if I can find one or two of those pieces and show it to you. Right? So guess what? You don't have to have any talent in any area. All you have to have is a dream or an idea. And guess what? Put it into practice. And the person who put the idea there is going to bring it to pass. So remember that you were made as a solution to a problem, but more importantly, you were made with a plan, a step-by-step -step plan. And the plan is not to harm you. The plan is not to hurt you. The plan is to give you a hope, something always to look forward to, a future. And what is the end, the expected end, to make you prosperous and successful? Everybody, whether you are mentally challenged, physically challenged, financially challenged, socially challenged, or any other I challenged. Because if it is the creator who puts that plan and that dream and that vision into you, he is going to bring it to pass. That's why you need to know your driver. Because the driver of this journey that I am on is a super driver. He don't cut no corners. So you got to wait and do the thing properly. This morning I said to you, come. And I said to her, why are you late? She said to me, traffic. I said, traffic? I said, what has happened? Well, I left the same time yesterday. And I was early yesterday. I said, what is different? You know what she said to me? She says, that yesterday, the taxi that she took drive 
outside of the land, come out of the land and take us at a shortcut. And they want to be sit down in the line and would not move until the traffic moved. I said, well, guess what? That means you need to be early tomorrow, early early, so that you can take the taxi that stay in the line. Because you don't know the risk you put yourself at when you have a driver who will not obey the rules. And this driver obeys the rules. Not only does he get you there safely and soundly, but guess what? He gets you there in good time. But he not going to cut no rules because you leave late. So guess what? Now is the time. Not tomorrow. This is those people who say, tomorrow I'll go on a tomorrow I will go on a diet. Tomorrow I'm going to change it. Tomorrow never comes. So today is when you are going to make those adjustments. Start now. Because the earlier you start, the more rewards you're getting at the end. The more you plan up front, the more at the end. But well, that is a subject for tomorrow when you do pay as you enter. But today we're doing know your driver. Because if you do not know the driver and his capabilities, his ways, his procedures, how he works, then you're going to go in there and think that you must get to the destination in X time, not knowing that he is going to follow the rules. Because it's more important for you to develop patience to develop all the character that you need to develop which takes time so i that is when i learned the meaning of another principle and way that he made clear count it all joy when you fall into all spot of bungalow and stress and problems and because if you sit down in it and you not just endure, but enjoy the ride as you're going along, at the end of it, you'll find out that you have plenty of muscles, man, and you can deal with anything after that. Wow! We have all heard the story of this man who was given the responsibility of pushing this big boulder, moving the boulder. The boulder weighed tons. And he was told to go out there and move the boulder. An impossible task. Every day he go out there and he push and he push and the boulder don't even move an inch. Well, month passed, he was supposed to do this for three months. Still no move. Why when it come to two months, he come back to God and say, God, why I don't take this boulder to move at all? So maybe I waste my time, he said, you have a responsibility to follow through. And I'm here to tell you that in push and push and when one tree finish, the bullet did not move an inch, but the bullet is a huge, humongous rock big like almost like a house. Like a little house. And he says, well, clearly I have failed. And when came into complete, complaint, to the creator that you know he tried his best but he just couldn't move the boulder the creator said look in the mirror look in the mirror he said take off the clothes and put on the bathing trunks and look in the mirror well you take off the clothes and put on the bathing trunks and come to the mirror ha 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 you know what he saw every muscle in perfect condition ripped Talk about a six pack, talk about biceps and triceps, talk about shoulders and neck muscles, talk about everything, glutes, everything in perfect condition. That was the creator's objective. But sometimes you get a task to do and you don't realize that the the, 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 uh, actually, what should I say? Being successful at what you have been given is not about the, what happens as a result. 
It's about the process, the obedience to what you have been told to do. I have so many situations where I'm told to do X. And I don't see a thing happen after I do X. But I have learned from that story that what is most important in doing things that you are told is one thing, the obedience to the instructions. That is all the creator needs. I learned that from a great friend of mine who is a prophetess, she's on TV, and do you know everything that she says from, comes true. So I know she's a true prophet. Well, I'm here to tell you. She said the first time she, in her church, got up and told this lady who is in a wheelchair for 20 odd years, as a young lady she was, that she's going to get up and walk. And the lady never budged. And she was chastigated by her leaders. How dare you come and do this and blah, 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 blah. You know something? Years later, the lady get up and walk. Well, I remember that story. And one day I was sitting, talking along with some of my friends and, and, and discussing. But me, dear, I have this back pain. I've been to Benny King. I've been to here and I've been to there and not moving. I said, do you really believe God can heal you? He can heal you with many, you know? He can heal you with anybody. And she looked at me and she said, um, you think that he can heal you with anybody? Well, you try. Because I believe God can heal you with anybody. And I said, oh, no problem, no problem. And I just ran my hand on her back. I said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. This pain is going to go. If you believe that Jesus can do it, it doesn't matter who he uses. Be healed in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, she just started opening up her eyes. And she said she felt something warm on the first time. Do I have the gift of healing? Covet earnestly the best gifts. And whatever you covet, you can have. So what was I thinking of then? I could not care less whether she had responded in that way or not. Because several times after that, I have done things like that and have had no response. But guess what? Don't face me one day because my objective is just following the instructions. It is not my responsibility to see or to look to find out what has happened because that is his responsibility. The creator will decide what he wants to do out of this, when he wants to do it, when is the best time. Oh, I am just here to plant the seed. So let us all be farmers as we close out, knowing who our driver is, because our driver is all powerful. And you don't have to have any power. Although he has given you authority, power, but you need to follow the instructions given. And guess what? If you follow the instructions given, you get a hundred percent marks every time. It's not about the results, it's about following the instructions of the driver. So know your driver, he is the almighty one. He is the one who can do everything. And I want to leave with you my favorite of who he is. His favorite name is called El Shaddai. And you know what that means? The Almighty One. But literally it means the many breasted God. And so I always think of him, you know, like you have on a chain and a necklace. But guess what? This chain and this necklace, you know, it have plenty of strands. But this one have just things hanging down all over, hundreds and hundreds of breasts hanging down from all on the hands and in the back and on from the head. You know, like an animal that has a whole heap of breasts, like a dog that is, you know, feeding the little dogs, the puppies, he has probably 12, you know, but guess what, six, eight, this one has hundreds, there is a breast for everything. And so, whenever I need anything, I just say, listen to me, listen to El Shaddai, 
Come on, turn on your back, gonna get this one because I am getting whatever there is for me. So remember, the many press it down. Know your driver. Your driver can supply everything you need. Every moment of the day. And I want to back up and make you understand his love. Gives and gives and gives. And it is unconditional. It is everlasting. Doesn't matter where you're at. At any point in time, you can decide. I'm going to patch into this love. I'm going to embrace this love. Because that, as we are going to talk about tomorrow, is the only way you can understand that you will be successful, you will be prosperous, and you will be able to do what the book says. That's right. Try it. Do it. Step it out there. You don't have to have any ability of yourself. And so tomorrow, we're going to be doing pay as you enter. And before you come on, I would like you to go through one or two today and yesterday. Okay, bring this back up on Celebrate Life on Reggae to Reggae and go through and make some notes and ask some questions and do all of that so that when you come on tomorrow and it's time to pay as you enter, you are ready to go to take your notes. So I have a little announcement to make. Don't go away, stay tuned, because we're having a special, right after my show, every day, we have Neil Haley. He's from Total Tutor Network, and he interviews the most excited NFL players and past players. Well, this time, he's going to be uh, doing Moyes for cool. I don't know, Moy for cool? Mm -hmm. It is M-O-R-S-E. F-O-K-O-U, and he is one of those NFL stars that I know all you guys, and even some of you ladies, will not want to miss. So stay tuned for me from Total Tutor Network, and see you tomorrow to get ready to pay as you enter. Celebrate life on reggae2reggae.com. A new wind that's gonna blow It's raining on the heat and Coming down on my people Taking the goodness of life And rendering them evil You see the little that they gave you Was just to deceive you Reggae2Reggae.com We encourage our listeners with an inclusive, intelligent, and innovative alternative media experience. We're back to the Total Tutors show on the Total Education Network, powered by the Beach Lifestyle Celebrity Segment. Again, go to the websites totaltutor.net and simplyg.com or join the challenge at wearethechallenge.com. GJ, my co-host. GJ, how are you? Doing fantastic, Gil. Fantastic. All right, fantastic, GJ. I'm excited about our celebrity today. Yeah, well, our, our, our celebrity today is a uh, professional football player. Uh, he was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles in 2009. He, uh, before that, he was played at the University of Maryland. 
And uh, he was born in uh, Cameroon, Africa. So I don't know how many uh, people from from Africa are in the NFL or have ever played in the NFL. So I know uh, that they uh, still that class. And uh, now he plays with the ball or with the uh, I want to say Baltimore Colts because we interviewed Tom Maddy the other day. So the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, so uh, anybody that's listening, uh, uh, excuse me. So. Um, Moses Foku is on the line. So, Moses, uh, he's here to talk also about his foundation and, and what's happening in his life, both on the field and off the field. So, welcome to the show, Moses. Thank you for having me. Good morning, guys. Uh, good morning to you as well, Moses. And uh, I want to really go into specifically uh, looking at, let's go right uh, to why you started the foundation. Because, again, there's always a situation in, in someone's career, especially when you have a lot of things going on, on the field to figure out ways to help others and how you came up with your foundation. Cause some football players, you know, are involved in a foundation, but this is your foundation and you've only been in the NFL a few years. So what made you want to decide to start a foundation? Uh, pretty much it was just, you know, you know, it all came up to my whole journey coming into NFL and, you know, uh, just being blessed with the opportunity to be in such a position I, I knew that it was just it was my duty just to give back as soon as I could, and uh, after having, you know after seeing that I that I that I made it through a couple years in the NFL, I, I knew that it was time for me to try to do something and give back, and, and 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 it was my after my third year, I just came up with the uh, I knew I always wanted to give back, but I came up with the foundation Route 53, and it's you know it's pretty much geared towards underprivileged kids in urban communities, and and uh, pretty much encouraging education, providing school supplies. Running football camps, just that was just my kind of way of just giving back for all the blessings that I've been that I've been given as a as, as, as an athlete, and you know, making it to the NFL myself. Yeah, I like uh, when I was reading up on your foundation, and especially GJ when they're ta- when they talk about the importance of education. As GJ knows, my, that's my main thing, and also um, at the Beach Lifestyle Media, we believe in education as well, right, G? Well, absolutely, and we're all you know we're, we're all students of some type, and. And uh, obviously, when the uh, the student's ready, the teacher appears, and and uh, we've both been on both sides of the coin. And one one thing I want to say is that we're talking about Moses' uh, 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 foundation, and it's the Route 53 Foundation. And uh, so, it's everybody listening, it's the Route 53 Foundation. And and uh, where where can they find information on the Route 53 Foundation? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's a website. It's, a, it's on the website, and uh, the word root is spelled R O O T, and then the number 53 foundation.org. So it's a little, it's a little funky, it's a little different. It's more like the roots, root roots under the ground instead of the route. And what I like, uh, what I was going to say, Moisa, Moses, Moses is uh, especially what I like about the foundation when I was uh, researching it is you look at the overall development and well-being of children in, growing up in urban areas because you see that they uh, don't have all the uh, tools ready to be successful in education, do they? When they, they exactly, start. exactly, and, and, and that kind of hit that kind of hit me hard because I felt like I was a product of that environment myself growing up and. And I knew how important just being prepared and having the right tools, how, how, how important that was for a kid and how, and how that would help them in a classroom, you know, just to be, just to be prepared as other counterparts across the world so, or across the country. So that, that, that was definitely one point that I, that I felt that I, that, I, that I wanted to hit. And, and that's definitely so important because we see, especially for students going into kindergarten, a lot of times in urban areas, they're far, far behind their counterparts in the suburban schools. So if you yep. can give those tools to people, Moses, that's awesome. I mean, and, and what you, you get this because I, I see it from just how your foundation is is rooted. That, that's a good point in a lot of ways that you're able to really uh, focus on the overall well-being of the children. Yes, yes, definitely. And GJ, he has a big thing coming up uh, tomorrow, and he's really excited about that. So uh, I, I, I know when we talk about events, and GJ and I talk about an event, we're going to be out in L.A. in March, and we're really excited about uh, a bunch of different things, trying to help some foundations out there, because GJ also has a foundation called the Mission G Foundation. G, isn't that true? Correct. Mission G Foundation, you know, started out really to help entrepreneurs, but what's happened is because of all the different people that we've had on our show, and the relationships that we've built is that um, we want to help some of those foundations. So I'm sure there's some things we can do together to help each other 
with some Charlie's Foundations. And, and so we're, we're, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the event tomorrow night and then also how can uh, our listeners get, get involved because uh, they can obviously donate money, but what else can they do to help the Route 53 Foundation? Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, we have an event tomorrow where we're donating. We're starting off the year right by donating supplies to uh, local middle schools in Indianapolis. And uh, we're pretty much donating mass supplies or uh, chemical kits, you know, to these two middle schools, these two magnet middle schools, just to try to have, you know, to try to try to aid with their with their supplies and having them have the right tools to, to have a, a strong foundation, a strong education. And, uh, you know, if people like to get involved, you know, you can always go to the website, ROOT53 Foundation. Of course, you can always donate. Uh, the, the, my, 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 my lady Jane, who runs it, you can always email her, try to get in contact with her, try, uh, try to get more involved. And, and we have a lot of things coming up in this year, such as it's more things in February, more things in March. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a moving, it's a moving thing we, we're doing. It's progressing and, uh, I'm very excited about it. We have a lot, a lot of things going on, such as trying to build computer labs in, uh, in certain cities, uh, running football camps. So, you know, promoting education. We have, we have a lot of things going on. So just go to the website and uh, get in touch with, with Jane, and, and we can move forward from there. Also, Moses, what else is going on uh, specifically? Like you said, you're working in Indianapolis, but you said this is this is a national movement, not just in Indianapolis, correct? Exactly. Uh, for, for right now, we're, 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 we're based out of my hometown in Maryland, where I, where I grew up at, and in any other NFL city that I'm playing, that I'm currently playing in. And then we're and then, and then we're moving from there and getting and going bigger and bigger. So, you know, we're we're just a new foundation. We started last year and we're and we're and we're growing we're growing steadily. Well, that's fantastic, and always the help is so important, GJ, isn't it? I mean, because especially when you start a foundation, as GJ will talk about as well, there's so much more to it, and 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 that that's one thing as him being an entrepreneur. It's kind of you're wearing Moses also an entrepreneur hat as well, GJ. Isn't that true? That people who own foundations, same thing. Well, absolutely, and, and obviously there's a lot of do's and don'ts for a foundation, as, I, as I've learned. And so, you know, to run it correctly, the other thing is is that, you know, keeping the cost down so that the, most of the dollars gets to the end result. Um, exactly. You know, and, and, and obviously in this case, you know, it's, it's the kids and the school so they can benefit and help the kids. And obviously, you know, um, I'm, I'm passionate about helping kids as well, and, and so I, I applaud you for, you know, one is recognizing a need, two, utilizing your platform to give back, and then your your connections and, and, and resources as well. So that says a lot about you as a person and, and as a player. And, and so I applaud you for that. And then, um, you know, as far as, you know, the, the Route 53 Foundation, obviously, it's, it's, it, it, we focus on Maryland and Indiana, and it's, it's growing. So, um what what are some of the things that you've learned on the field that you've been able to apply into your your national organization? Things that I learned on the field. Yeah, taking right, from the field. Been... Yeah, to your yeah. to your foundation. Oh, uh, I wouldn't say I really learned too much on the field that applied to the foundation. I just I, I just take the motivation and, and and the positioning, like I think, like you said, that I, that I've been able to be in. To to, to to even make me work harder for the foundation because I, I know that that had it not been for my my ability to be you know to play football to be in this position or to be in the NFL I wouldn't even have been able to touch so many people in in such a short period of time so I just use that as motivation to continue to do my best on the field to continue to try to give back and just to be a better man every day. All right, Moses. Uh, let's continue to this conversation. A lot of ways. Uh, one thing, when you're because I'm looking at when you're talking about the overall development and uh, and well-being of children. What have you gathered since you've been involved in the organization to see the things that they're lacking? Once you finally got y- your hands right into this uh, thing, you said, "I need to help. I know I need to help." That once you learned, you must have saw some oh. really st- interesting. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean. I mean, from what I've learned, especially uh, especially from the kids that I think I'm trying to help, is you know I, I did some studies. You know, just like the kids who have the free lunches, like these kids are 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 not are not up to their counterparts across the country. Like they they don't have they, they don't have the guidance. We 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 try we even try to do kind of some type of mentorship or some you know trying to teach them skills like. They 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 they're, they're not like I said they're not they're not as equal or or as prepared as their other counterparts across the country because they're lacking the schools or the or or, or, or they're lacking the 
the um, the confidence or, or whatever it may be. So, I, so I, and, and I remember when I was a kid that, that I even went through kind of a, a program, I guess, where, where they went and helped us buy a kind of a shopping spree to help us buy clothes or, 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 or supplies. And, and, I, and I just saw what that did for my confidence and, 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 and for me. And it just brought me, you know, made me feel better about myself, and 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 that's what I that's what I see in these kids who are out there. They 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 feel unprepared. They feel like they don't have the right the right tools, and therefore their their confidence in school is not that high. Well, so not, for me, for, for me, I'm I'm just trying to kind of even the playing field the best way I can. Well, most definitely, and I think that that's what you're trying to do. Is you know that they are they get they're far behind their counterparts in certain ways, and that they're they're as capable as anyone else, as we've been gathering. Exactly. And one thing that you might think about with your foundation, there was a study on uh, out in Education World that talked about specifically that kids that even are performing high well in school that are in uh, poorer areas are not going to college. So if that's something that you can put in the focus of your foundation to make sure that these kids, especially that are performing really well in high school, mm-hmm. can attend college, that'll be huge. Okay. That's a really good thing to check into and look at. Uh, so, GJ, um, uh, first of all, I wanted to, with Moses. So, uh, a really successful year uh, with Indianapolis this year, with uh, compared to last year's team. And uh, I know that you you have a lot to build on for next year, don't you? You definitely do. Uh, I got traded to the Colts this past season uh, from, in, from from Philadelphia Eagles, and uh, and I had a pretty good season. Uh, the team did well. We we we, we went into playoffs. And um, you know we faced a lot of adversity, but it, it was definitely a, a, a pleasing outcome for, for for such a young team and, and for, for for the things that they had to go through. No, most definitely, most definitely. And uh, GJ, that was an inspiring, inspiring story with the coach, wasn't it, G? Very, very inspiring, and 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 like uh, Moses said, you know, a young team that was you know that overachieved the expectations of everyone, and then obviously you got the underlying stories and. <laughs> And uh, you know, and obviously you had the you know the the, the new rookie quarterback that definitely shined, and and so a lot of, a lot of adversity that turned into a very positive. So I know you I know you all have a great you know a great outlook, and so I'm excited to be uh, cheering for you, Moses, and watching you on the field. Um, one of the questions that we ask each of our guests is is, is what is your 90 day challenge, which is what are, what what's uh, your goal over the next ninety days, both for yourself and for your foundation, uh, that you'd like to achieve? Oh, uh, ninety day goal. We are we are we are closely approaching making a, making a deal with one of the libraries to to uh, to make to, to start or to build our first our first media library, and and I, and, and that's going to be one of my ninety. That's going to be one of my goals within the next three months. And uh, off the field. I, uh, I'm a free agent right now. I should be wait. I'm, I'm just waiting to find out what team I should be playing with on next year. So that that should that should also be on my 90 day goal. <laughs> any uh, thought process or any teams courting you right now that you can say or not? No, no, not really. I, I think the chat is pretty down right now. There's a lot of things going on with the Pro Bowl, uh, the Senior Bowl, the uh, the Combine coming up in February, and uh, and the Super Bowl. So. Uh, it's not the time to be to be to be talking right now, but it should be happening. And I think in a, in a couple few in the next few weeks or months. Well, we hope to have you back on again, uh, probably in ninety days, to tell us what's going on with the foundations, other things that you're promoting. Because of being an education show, we're able to get it out all over the world about the great things that you're doing, Moses, and that's fantastic. So, again, for our our listeners out there, where can we find more information? First of all, on the foundation, and then yourself. Yeah, definitely. More information on the foundation, you can go down to www.root53foundation.org, and that is R-O-O-T-53foundation.org. And uh, and you can find out things about the foundation and myself on there, or not. If not, you can go down to the Indianapolis Coast website and learn more about Moses Foku. And also, you can follow you on Twitter, which I tweeted you out last night, and thanks for the response. I appreciate that. Exactly. Yep, you can find me on Twitter at Moses Foku. And that's M O I S E, last name F O K O U. All right. Well, thanks again, Moses, for calling the program. Really enjoyed our conversation and best of luck with the foundation. I love the idea of what you're trying to do and wherever it continues to grow, uh, the Toll Education Network and Beach Lifestyle Media will be there to help you out any way possible. Okay. 
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. All right, take care. All right. You're listening Bye-bye. to Total Tutor Show, uh, powered by the Beach Lifestyle Celebrity Segment. And we'll be back in just a moment. Since the first public demonstration of radio by Nikola Tesla in 1893, 